this screencast is going to start with the very beginning of chapter 25, talking about the election of 1960. So, we know that after Roosevelt passed away, Truman became president, and Truman was followed by Eisenhower, who had a vice president named Richard Nixon, and in the election of 1960, Richard Nixon is going to run as the Republican candidate against John F. Kennedy, a up-and-comer, um, who was the Democratic candidate. This is going to be the first ever election to have a nationally televised presidential debate. And this is going to be very significant to the outcome of the election because, as many of you know, John F. Kennedy has a reputation for being um, easy on the eyes. And he kind of comes off to Americans as young and poised and professional. And Nixon is just nervous um, and kind of anxious looking in comparison so people kind of because of how Kennedy presents himself are more attracted to him um, in terms of who they want their next president to be and that is going to have an effect on the outcome of the election because Kennedy will win the election in 1960. Kennedy is the youngest president uh, to ever be elected. I believe he was 43 at the time. And his presence in the White House is just the beginning of this new era um, because people are so very interested in him as a person as well as his very beautiful family. Um, you really don't think about John F. Kennedy today without thinking about his wife, Jackie. Um, and she just kind of became the, you know, figure for fashion and grace and uh, charm and class. And people were just very interested in her as well and their two young children. And so it's kind of just this new era where Americans are actually interested in their presidents um, a little more seriously. It was referred to as the Camelot years, um, which actually references uh, Camelot, the court of King Arthur, um, if you're familiar with that uh, folk tale of King Arthur pulling the the sword out of the stone and then he has his his very famous court and it's just kind of this American version of the royal family and Kennedy's time in the White House becomes known as the Camelot years. Now I'm going to have, I don't know if this is on your outline already, but if y'all have the bullet, a new military policy and or um, Kennedy with civil rights movement, delete both of those things. And we're going to skip right to the crisis in Cuba. We're going to do a little bit of background today, and then we are going to um, talk about actual events uh, to, um, in class on Tuesday. So starting with the crisis over Cuba, um, a new dictator in town, which this name should be very familiar to you. Just right before Kennedy took office, um, President Eisenhower was actually having some trouble with Cuba um, and he ended up cutting off diplomatic relations with them at the time. And this is because uh, a new revolutionary communist leader um, by the name of Fidel Castro had kind of seized power. 
of the Cuban island. And um, because he was a communist, he is going to immediately kind of create this friendship and alliance with the Soviet Union. Now this leads us to the Cuban dilemma because we are not, you know, necessarily concerned with the nation of Cuba, but we are concerned at the idea of the Soviets having a friendship an alliance with Cuba as they could use Cuba for its close proximity to us. I'm sure many of you are aware that um, Cuba lies just south of Florida. Um, and some of you may even be of Cuban descent. So anyway, um, that is our gravest concern in terms of Cuba going communist and their alliance with the Soviets, just the fact that communism itself is uh, so close to us and very much in our region. We'll talk about a few events that deal with um, us and Cuba in class on Tuesday, and I hope you'll enjoy the rest of your weekend. Please write down any questions that you have.